Hello everyone, my name is Binay. Welcome to my channel LifeLar. Today we are going to learn about Eliza. So before we start, if you like my video, please, please, please subscribe to my channel so that it will encourage me to make more videos for you. So today's topic is Eliza. So what is ELISA? ELISA is enzyme linked, linked immunosorbent assay. So what, why this, this name is uh, called enzyme linked immunosorbent assay? Because this is, this, all the assay is linked to an enzyme which can give us the detection level and uh, immunosorbent is because we are using antibody fixed antibody absorbed to the uh, surface so because of that this is immunosorbent so what is an ELISA ELISA is uh, nowadays used uh, mostly in detection of diseases and in some uh, research labs mostly uh, for detection of antigens and uh, in some food processing industries to detect some contamination or some uh, antigen which are toxins for uh, food and uh, so coming to the basic concept ELISA in ELISA we usually use an antigen uh, an antibody and the detection method so first thing is uh, antibody so suppose this is an antibody primary uh, antibody and this is fixed to a surface. We usually for ELISA we use multiplate. Uh, so this is like a multiple plate and uh, this usually 96 or 48. Uh, so this will be like uh, this uh, several wells, 96 wells. So to each well uh, there will be an anti antibody which, is, which will be fixed. So the, suppose this is the surface and to this we add our antigen which will be the target protein and uh, to the target protein we add another antibody which will uh, bind to this antigen and uh, usually this anti uh, this antibody can be directly tagged to hrp or through some secondary antibody uh, if we have uh, hrp on this like this uh, in this case we are using the biotin biotin tagged to this antibody and uh, to the biotin we can add we can add uh, uh, streptavidin tagged hrp horse radish peroxidase this is the enzyme i was talking about and this is the immune immune part of this and this is ab absorbent and uh, this is because this is fixed so the the concept of elisa is coming from this and uh, um, because this is hrp and when we put horse radish peroxidase and when we put some luminal or substrate this will we are putting a substrate on this and this will become a light this will then glow and this glow we can detect through plate reader or it usually at 450 nanometer absorption play, uh, using the plate reader so this is the basic concept of an ELISA so now coming to different types of ELISA uh, depending on our use we can use different types of ELISA so first one and easy one is direct ELISA so what happens in direct ELISA direct in direct ELISA we fix this antigen we fix this antigen on multi-well plate and then we add their uh, conjugated HRP conjugated antibody because this is already conjugated with uh, uh, the antibody so we call it direct ELISA and in the indirect ELISA we fix the antigen to the surface to this we add the primary antibody this is the primary antibody and to the primary antibody we add secondary antibody 
which has tag of HRP. So then we add uh, uh, substrate and it will uh, uh, break down the substrate to glow and make some color. So we can detect the color. And in the uh, sandwich ELISA. So in this case, we fix first one antibody to the surface. In each well, uh, the first antibody is uh, adjusted and uh, to this we add the our antigen. This is the antigen. This is suppose antibody 1. And to this we add another antibody which is antibody 2. In this case, we can directly uh, tag our HRP to this antibody 2 or using a secondary antibody which which will be tagged to HRP and uh, this is HRP and this is the secondary anti antibody. So after this the difference between indirect and sandwich is this much only the antibody which is capturing antibody. So first is antibodies captured onto the well and then antigen ad added and second antibody and then HRP tagged antibody or you can directly tag HRP to this uh, second antibody. And next is competitive ELISA. In competitive ELISA, we first tag our antigen, suppose this is our antigen and we fix this one with the detecting antibody and this will be uh, tagged to an HRP, HRP. So now this is already fixed. So now if we want to detect some antigen or antibody, we make some competitive. So we add our antigen or antibody to this. So this our anti antigen or antibody will re replace this so that the this is kind of reverse in this type of ELISA we detect our maximum luminosity Lum, uh, luminal uh, like concentration of our color so here we detect the reduction of our color this will replace our color so we can detect how much color is replaced on that basis we can detect uh, we can find out which kind of antigen or how, how much antigen is present or antibody is present. So competitive ELISA can be um, combined with any of these ELISA. So now we will learn uh, all these different types of ELISA in little detail. So first is direct ELISA. As I said earlier, we, uh, in this first uh, case, we tag our antigen to the well and then we add anti, uh, antibody con uh, conjugated with HRP. So uh, first thing is when do we need to use this? So usually this is used in antigen screening. So what is antigen screening? Suppose we will take one example. So we need to uh, check the endotoxin, endotoxin in milk. So in that case, what do we do? We use uh, collect different samples of milk and we will detect in that endotoxin. So we need to uh, find out which sample of milk has endotoxin. Endotoxin is a food poison agent and it comes from bacteria. So we need to detect which milk is uh, contaminated with endotoxin. So what we need to do? We will take different samples of milk and we will uh, do the serial dilution and fix it to the 96 well plate. So we will keep this uh, uh, milk containing endotoxin in 96 well plate and uh, keep some around uh, 37 degree uh, for one day. And then we will wash it out. Why do we need to wash it? Because we need to wash out all the unbound or non-specific uh, proteins so that we can detect or we can reduce our background. So suppose this is antigen, antigen is fixed to the well and then we add our 
antibody conjugated with HRP. And then this HRP will bind to the antigen. HRP conjugated antibody will bind to the antigen. And then we do the second wash to remove all the unbound antibodies. And after that, we will put our substrate. And this, uh, because this is HRP, so we need to put our liminal uh, substrate. So after putting the substrate, it will glow. So this is, this will make an enzyme reaction, and we can detect this using plate reader. So in this way, we can detect two multi multiple uh, multiple wells. So with as we put different milk samples we can see which uh, well is glowing suppose we have several wells so out of these wells we need to check which well is glowing suppose this well is glowing that means this well containing the sample of milk has endotoxin so we can detect in this way we can detect antigens so now coming to the advantage and disadvantage of this uh, system direct direct ELISA. So advantage is this is very short time consuming and because we are um, directly using the HRP consecuted antibody. So we don't need too much time. So it, this is very much less time consuming and because we are using directly antibody conjugated with HRP so in this case we, we do not have cross reactivity so we do not need too many antibodies to cross reactive with uh, cross reactivate with another antigen so it, this process is very specific so now coming to the uh, disadvantage of this process so this uh, in this process the this most uh, disadvantage is the conjugation because we need to conjugate HRP with our antibody. Second disadvantage is low signal because this is uh, conjugated with HRP and this antibody. Suppose we have uh, n number, suppose 5 antigen and we have only 5 antibodies bound to these antigens. So in this case, the signal will be very low. And another, another disadvantage is because we are fixing this antigen to our surface. So multiple non-specific antigens will also be fixed to the surface. So in that way, the uh, background will be little higher. So now coming to indirect ELISA. As I said earlier, indirect ELISA is, uh, in this case, we use two antibodies. Uh, first the primary antibody binds to the antigen and then secondary antibody conjugated with HRP binds to the primary antibody. So why do we need this? So uh, let's take an example. Nowadays we uh, hear about uh, antibody production against uh, after vaccination antibody production against spike protein. So how, how do they detect that? Suppose uh, this is uh, uh, a spike protein. Spike protein is an antigen in this case. So in multi-plate, multi-well uh, plate, we put our spike protein and fix it. To this, we uh, put different serum collected from different human humans, and we need to check whether the IgG corresponding to the spike protein is present in our sample or not. So then we wash it. So after washing, we put our secondary antibody conjugated with HRP. Then we do washing again to re uh, remove all those unbound antibodies and then put our substrate to glow. And this, this will be the reaction. So we can detect this uh, reaction using multiplate reader. So now suppose some people have um, antibody against the spy protein. So these, uh, those wells will glow. So that we can find out how many antibodies are present in those people and which people have those antibodies.
So in this indirect ELISA, another concept is how much antigen uh, or antibody is present in our sample. To measure the concentration of IgG in serum samples, first we need to make the titration. Because spike protein concentration is fixed and we are putting our different concentration of IgG. So to this, we will add our uh, secondary antibody and we can detect our, uh, we can check our absorption. So suppose the uh, depending on concentration, so absorption will be uh, here the absorption, this is concentration. So suppose uh, this is our titration curve. So from this, suppose an unknown protein has the absorption, suppose here, to corresponding this, we can measure how much concentration of antibody is present. So this way we can check our concentration of IgG in serum. So that, that is called the IgG titer. So now coming to the advantage and disadvantage. So first is advantage. So what is the advantage of this? Because we are using the secondary antibody uh, to uh, use uh, to detect the luminosity. So uh, secondary antibody can be uh, bound in multiple numbers. So suppose this is secondary antibody and it is binding to the primary antibody in multiple numbers. So we, we can detect the signal will be amplified. So we can detect more uh, absorption. The absorption will be higher. And the second advantage is flexibility because in direct ELISA we need to uh, find primary antibodies conjugated with HRP. So in this case we don't need the primary antibody uh, conjugated with HRP because we are using secondary antibody conjugated with uh, HRP and this secondary antibody can be used in multiple primary antibodies. So that is the flexibility in this case. Suppose this is antibody 1 and it is this is detecting antigen 1. So in another case, we are detecting antigen 2 with antibody 2. So in this case also, we can use the secondary antibody if this these two antibodies are produced in same uh, animal. So now coming to the disadvantage of this process. So disadvantage is because we are using two antibodies. So this will be little longer than the direct ELISA. And another disadvantage is because we are using secondary antibody and this secondary antibody sometimes can bind to uh, our antigen and this will give the cross reactivity and false positive result. So now we'll discuss about sandwich ELISA. So like in a uh, sandwich between uh, two slices, we put some uh, material in between. So a similar concept is here between two antibodies, we put our antigen. So be because of that, this is called sandwich ELISA. So we'll take an example of uh, sandwich ELISA because recently we are going through COVID. So we'll take that example. So we need to, you must have heard about antigen test. So in this antigen test, we use sandwich ELISA method. So what we do, first we fix our antibody 1 to the multi-well plate and to this we put different serum samples which contains spike protein and then we wash it to remove all the unbound and non-specific antigens and then we put our secondary antibody conjugated with HRP or we can use uh, two way indirect also this is this is called uh, direct sandwich and also we can use the indirect sandwich which means uh, we put f um, primary antibody and then secondary antibody like like uh, like our indirect ELISA we can put uh, secondary antibody conjugated with the uh, HRP so we will consider this the direct uh, uh, sandwich ELISA so then we wash it and then we put our substrate to this and after the getting the reaction we will detect it using multiplet uh, reader. So now uh, what is there is a trick in this. So what is the trick? The trick is 
choosing the antibody because we are using two different antibodies. So these antibodies should detect different epitopes of the antigen. Suppose this is antibody 1. Antibody 1 is detecting a different uh, epitope of the anti antigen. The same epitope cannot be detected by the antibody 2. So that is the trick in this case. So now coming to the advantage of this process because we are using two antibodies and th this is very the most specific and most sensitive ELISA out of all these ELISA. So that is the sen when it comes to the sensitivity this is the most sensitive and for most of the diagnosis processes because we need to find out the disease so most of the diagnosis processes are using this uh, sandwich Eliza to find the disease and the second uh, advantage of this process is flexibility because we are using uh, two antibodies so like I said in indirect Eliza case so we can use our secondary antibody in multiple uh, primary antibodies so that way this is also very flexible so now coming to the disadvantage of this process as I said we need to choose two different antibodies that is the most challenging part of this process we need to find out uh, two antibodies which are which are re recognizing two different epitopes and those epitopes cannot be coinciding if if they coincide the antibody second antibody will not bind so now we will discuss about the competitive ELISA so what is the competitive ELISA why do you call, call it competitive because we compete our antigen with fixed antigen so this type of and uh, ELISA can be combined with any of the previous uh, previously discussed uh, ELISA like direct indirect or sandwich ELISA so we'll take an example here so suppose we have two cases one has uh, one uh, suppose we have two serums one has a low antigen one has high antigen so this is the low antigen so this and this is the high antigen having uh, are present in the serum so first we will fix our antibody in the multi-well plate and to this we will put our antigen known antigen conjugated with HRP so now we will put so suppose this is our antigen which is conjugated to the HRP so now in this case all the antibodies are full with antigen conjugated with the HRP so in this case if we detect this one and we, uh, we, we need to uh, put our substrate and this will glow the maximum so then we will put our uh, ant antigen conte containing in the serum <coughs> so suppose this is low antigen containing serum and this is the high antigen containing serum so this antigen will compete compete with the already uh, fixed antigen which has uh, conjugated hrp and it will replace those antigens so that so suppose this is high antigen containing serum and this high antigen containing serum and these antigens will replace most of the antigen which are which are having hrp conjugated so this will after replacing the we have only antigens which do not have hrp conjugation and in low uh, antigen containing serum so this uh, the maximum antibody will bound to the antigen which we previously added and this uh, antigen will have the hrp conjugation so now we have two conditions so this is high hrp uh, high antigen containing serum this is low antigen containing serum and after after the competitive uh, binding we have in high antigen containing uh, serum case we will see after after adding the substrate suppose we are adding substrate in here we will see more luminosity here and less luminosity here that means 
less less luminosity containing less absorption which is less absorption has more antigen but the more absorption has less antigen this is the opposite to our previous ELISA so this is the typical example of a competitive ELISA so we can use uh, combine our previous ELISA like we can first fix antigen and then uh, add antibody uh, or in some cases we um, can first add antibody and then add antigen so either way we can use these and uh, ELISA combined with competitiveness depending on the combination of ELISA all the advantage and disadvantage are also present in competitive ELISA so this is all about ELISA if you like these videos please uh, share them and uh, subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye